Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real-life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Furkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. Hey there, welcome back. We're on episode seven of the Ask Leffy podcast. What are we talking about today, Dan? Oh, geez, Greg. The Probably one of our most common questions, why is your backflow preventer dripping? That is probably one of our most common questions. Boy, you get that question all the time. Yeah, and you know, it's funny. This is kind of a misunderstood piece of hardware that's in a hydronic system. Yeah. You, you know, know the, the other way we get that question is, my backflow preventer has failed. It's starting to drip. Yeah, and then it, it's easier to, for a guy to, to go and replace it, right? It's less time-consuming, but has it really failed? No, no, it's not. The simple answer is it's just dirty. It's doing its job. Right, it's doing its job of interrupting flow when there's debris stuck in the check. Right, yeah, and well, and the debris in the check is what causes it to continue to weep, but... The fact that, you know, anytime there's a change in pressure in the system or water hammer or surge, you need to protect the domestic side of your of your plumbing system. Right. And that's what this backflow preventer is there to do. Right. It's keeping the boiler side water from flowing back into the domestic water. Right. Yep. Protecting your domestic source. So the simple answer is it, you know, when it continues to drip, has it failed? No. No, it really hasn't. It really hasn't failed. No, it really hasn't. That ceiling surface is so tiny and where those double checks hit hit that piece of brass that it doesn't take much more than a grit of sand. And I know that sounds kind of silly, but that's how these are designed. And it doesn't matter. I mean, you and I have been in the field long enough. We've seen other competitors, a Honeywell, a Watts, whatever. We've seen them go to them and they're leaking, you yeah. know. And what's what's the easiest thing to do? Just re- yeah, just replace it. Just replace it. I mean, that's quick and simple. And but you know, you have to realize that you know there's cost there. And and my biggest thing is you know a lot of guys want to come back and warranty the product because it's it's dripping and it's like okay, that's a kind of a gray line because it's not really a failure. It's it's doing what it's designed to do. It's just the fact that you have a little debris stuck in it, and the debris can come from either side of your system. Right. Most of the time it comes from the feed water side. Right. I mean, we've seen, I've taken some of these apart and even found pieces of thread tape stuck in it. Um, chunks of, so- chunks of, of solder. solder. Yep. yep. Copper Fa- shavings. Yeah, copper shavings. Or in worst case scenario, it's, you know, it's hard water chunks, you know, pieces of lime and scale that have somehow made it made their way through or flaked off the body. And, and gotten stuck in there. Right. Well, because in reality, these checks aren't opening and closing all the time. They're nope. opening when they add water to the system and then closing. And if you get a water hammer or a surge, you know, that's when it can knock some debris loose and that debris will get stuck in those checks and it and it won't reseal. Right. That Those checks will actually float a little bit. And when they float, that allows a little inrush of water, usually on the, on the high pressure side, to come in and... When they go to settle back, that's when that piece of debris gets wedged in there. Right. Yeah. I mean, common guys probably seen that with relief valves over time. You'll get a relief valve that'll, you know, with a ther- little thermal expansion, might open up and get a piece of debris and continues to drip. It's the same concept with our check valves. You get that chunk in there. I mean, you and I both have tried to explain how to take one of these apart and clean it. Now, obviously, the quickest solution to the problem is just replace one and move on. But... If you didn't have one on the truck, at worst you're going to need is a set of ceiling washers, right? Right. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you're right. The, you know, the quickest solution is to replace it if you have one. But when you're on that job site and you don't have one convenient, then it's not your quickest solution because you have to go get one and come back with it. It's a second trip. It's an inconvenience to a customer or homeowner. Um, so at that point, your quickest solution may be to take it apart and clean it out. Right. So we actually got one here in hand, and it's usually the, to get it apart, you start with breaking the union nuts. Right. You clean off the tail pieces. Uh, you remove any, what's left of any debris or any, any pieces of that, that ceiling washer that is in, 
in the unions themselves. Right. Then you can pull the body out, and there's this big inlet side where the inlet check sits. The inlet check is usually where we find most of the, the debris buildup. Right. And getting this thing apart, it's not exactly the prettiest job, is it? I mean, it's not not easy. I mean, it, it takes, you know, it could take a channel ox and a pipe wrench. Yeah. But I've it's sealed with a sealing washer, so it's not like... It's it's not necessarily that it's overly tight that you need no. some aggressive tools to, to to get it open. It's that you know it's a large flat surface. It's kind of a little bit challenging at times to grab, but it seals with a sealing wa- or with an O ring. Actually, it seals with an right. O ring, um, so you don't have to overly tighten it when you put it back together either. No, so and once you get this uh, inlet tailpiece off, it's the pe- the larger piece with the two ears on it. You spin that loose, you pull it out, and... That's uh, your first check valve. That's your first check valve right there. You're actually able to get to the inlet side check. Now, you look at it and go, okay, how do I clean this thing? Well, really, all you need is probably just a, a, a punch or even a screwdriver just to move that little check valve in there. You can see the dome down inside, and what I would tell a guy to do is take it, take a screwdriver, and just depress that dome, push down in it, and flush some clean water through right. it. You go right over to the slop laundry, sink, yeah, laundry slop tub. Sink, laundry yep. tub or, or a sink and, and flush through it. Yeah, I mean, it's that simple. And then you could also spin it around and, and uh, flush water through the, the spring side, you know, just depress it again from underneath, push that dome up flush in there. in the reverse direction. Yep. Sure. And then you can get all the debris out of it. And then what's nice, you don't have to worry about any seals on the body per se, just until you hit the hit the union side of things, right? You can but actually get in there once you have it apart, and you can push the outgoing check, the outlet check. You can actually push that out of the body as well. And uh, you, I mean, with my finger here, I have it in my hand. With my finger, you can actually push the check valve open and almost, with my finger, wipe the seat. Yeah. Uh, but take that over to a sink and push it open and flush that out, and you can flush that in both directions, clean it out. And then just put it back together. There's a spring in the middle that allows with, you know, the double check action. Right. Um, but and very simple to put back together, too. And actually looking at this, that is right right there is where you're going to find the source of the leak. So you could almost take care of the source of the leak, the debris stuck in that on the back side of that first check. Because that is where it meets up to the, the downstream second side check. Right. And you don't necessarily have to pull that body apart in order to clean that part. All you need to do is grab hold of it with a pair of needle nose or even stick a screwdriver into it right. and get you it just out. Just pull it out. Yep. Sure. You know, and then the key is as you thread it back together, it's sealing with that O-ring, so you don't have to overly tighten it, um, just enough to get that to bite down and seal, and then w- put in a new set of sealing washers and put it back in place. Right. And you know this description is almost easier easier shown on a video. I mean, you guys are listening to us going, okay, well, what's that look like? I think what we're going to do is maybe shoot a little YouTube video yeah, and then uh, try to put a link in the description of the show notes here. Yeah, uh, it'd be great to get a video out and, and show how easy it is to take it apart and clean it out. Yeah, I think that would be phenomenal. So, and you got to remember that the, the double check back flows that we're talking about um, are used for domestic systems. They're not for potable water. They are for, you know, they are low lead um, because they are coming in contact with domestic water, but they're designed specifically for uh, hydronic, hydronic yep. heating applications. Hydronic fill side. Exactly. Well, now that we've kind of just went through all that with how to clean it and, you know, one of the reasons why it drips is dirt in it. Mm-hmm. The other one is the water hammer. You know, if you have... A plumbing system that doesn't have hammer arresters on it. Yep. I think the biggest offenders are usually wash machines and dishwashers. Yeah, those have really quick reacting valves, and they're usually a pretty high flow behind them. So when they slam shut, um, they tend to create a water hammer in the system, and that can cause those checks to bounce. You'll you'll if if you're down there, and you know it can cause your pipes to maybe rattle a little, or right, or the check valves in in the the backflow preventer to bounce and weep and 
Yeah, and, and it's just a lot of times that'll be just a quick a quick weep, and it might not even be f- uh, fast enough for debris to carry in there. Right. Not always. Sometimes it does. That one thing will lead to another, but most of the time it'll be a quick weep, and the homeowner will walk by because, hey, maybe the mechanical room's right by the, the laundry room or, or in it. Right. And they see, you know, water on the floor. Where'd that come from? And then, you know, the technician gets called out to the job, and they're looking around going, well, I don't not doing right. it now it may have sealed and dried up because right. it did its job but you know but then over time i mean that may happen over and over and over again because it's not going to happen once with a wash machine or or a dishwasher so it happens over and over and over and then at some point is when that little grain of, of debris is gets in the check and right yeah then you're done then you're getting a, a service call yeah but the good news is that we do offer a replacement body that comes with sealing washers under our 573-100A part number. So yep. that's something that you can throw on your truck. Or you can just order whatever your supply house has for 573 backflow preventers. They're all the same. The body is the same. What changes is the tailpiece, is the connection type. Right. So, I mean, if you had to in a pinch, if you just had a half-inch sweat model, which I think is probably the cheapest one with the ceiling washers in it, you could just remove the, the union nut and tailpiece, and you got at least the body and set of ceiling washers right. to get that, that uh, customer back into service. Right, exactly. And our three-quarter and half-inch model, because face it, you'll get on a job site where at one point we used to have a tag riveted on it that said 573 half-inch and three-quarter. And I get a lot of calls from guys about that. They're like, well, I need the three-quarter inch one because it's three-quarter inch pipe connected to it. The body is the same. Yep. Whether it's half inch or three-quarter, the body's the same. It's the connection point that changes. So don't be afraid if you are out servicing a system with a three-quarter inch connection and, and three-quarter inch, you think you have the three-quarter inch body and you have a half inch on your truck, that works. Yep. They're interchangeable. They're same body. Bodies are the same, all universal. Well, yeah, I think we covered that really well. Um, I guess uh, any closing thoughts on backflow preventers? No, I think we did a great job of covering that. I mean, if you guys have questions, please don't be afraid to call us. You know, we're always here to help. I think Greg w- had a good point with making a short video showing how to disassemble it and clean it, so I, I would keep your eyes out for that. That'll come through. Yeah, well, that's the end of it for this week. Uh, tune in next week. We're going to talk about Pressure reducing valves. Yeah, great topic. We get a lot of calls on pressure reducing valves, and it's good to jump back on a plumbing topic. Absolutely. We'll see, see you next week. week. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at kalefi.com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414 Two three eight two three six zero.